So the generations that followed in 1900 and up to when your family lived here and you grew up here, tell me what it was like in Wilmington when you grew up. Well, I was born in Wilmington in 1963, and my parents were from, um, my mom was from Waterbury, Connecticut, my father was from Somerville, Massachusetts, and they were liberal Republican North, Northeasterners, and um, um, when they moved to the South, J Jim Crow was like Marsh, you know, I think mean, it was Mars to them, you know, it was Martian. And, you know, they didn't understand why or, why or how the state could discriminate against people due solely to their race. And my father employed black people routinely and, and did not discriminate against them. In fact, he paid them the same wage or higher than he paid white people because he paid them based on their qualifications and not their color, which was not how it was here. That was alien to, that philosophy was alien to the local population. They were used to paying people based on their race and not their qualifications. And, they and, suffered dis and your father suffered dis discrimination from oh, other Oh, but I remember we lived in a whites only neighborhood because back then the neighborhoods were legally segregated by state law. And so the neighbors would call up and go, oh, uh, I see you had them niggers over there. My dad said, yeah, the only niggers in this neighborhood are you. And, you know, yeah, I employ black people, and they work better than most of the white people I've found around here. He stood his ground. Then. He stood his ground. So when My you... dad didn't take no crap off of nobody. Good. So when you started school, and you said you had an example of the first time that there was, uh, your school was mostly white, all white? When, when I started attending public school in New Hanover County in 1969, my school was legally segregated. There were no black students. Um, in the middle of my first year, they brought a black girl into my class. I was six years old. She was ten. Um, the reason why they put her in first grade was because she couldn't read. She had no education. She wore homemade clothes. Um, she was dirt poor, which all blacks were then. Um, in my area because they had been discriminated against for so many years, decades, hundreds of years. No employment opportunities, no, no chance of advancement, no education. I mean, here was a 10-year-old girl in a first grade, first grade class because she couldn't read. And so they put her in first grade so she could learn how to read. So even at a young age, you understood the the differences and the lacking that was going yes, on I with did. their... Yes, I did. And my good. parents had been teaching me about the wrongs of this. That, you know, that this was wrong and this was something that needed to be changed and that it wasn't going to happen overnight. In high school, what high school did you go to? I went to New Hanover. And it was integrated by then? Yes. Did you get bused to the school too? Yes, I did. Was it a white only bus or was the bus integrated no, then too? bus was integrated by okay. then. So by, by then a lot? high school, everything was integrated. Okay. Um, but in the second grade was when they really integrated my school. And I was seven years old, and every, almost every day we had white supremacists calling the school, threatening to bomb the school because there 19. were because there were niggers going to that school. This was in 1970. 1971. Okay. Wow. Uh, I, I spent probably just as much time in a line on the schoolyard because of a bomb scare that year than I did in class. Wow. I mean, it was that frequent. And do you remember the riots in 71? Yes, I do. You said something about going with your dad down to his uh, shop. Uh, yeah, um, when the uh, race riots broke out in Wilmington in 1971, my father uh, cleaned and painted bulk oil storage tanks for a living. Southern Maintenance Company was the name of his company. 
and it was located on the Cape Fear River, uh, just down here. And um, um, he fibbed to my mom and told her that he had left his pipe at work, and he smoked a pipe. And so he loaded me up into the truck, and he drove down to his office, which was where the bulk oil storage tanks were on the river. And he went in for a few minutes and came back out. And as we were coming back up Third Street, when we got to Dawson Street, there was a roadblock by the National Guard. And they said that the blacks were rioting and that we couldn't go up Dawson Street because that was the way back to our house. And uh, I remember looking up Dawson Street and there was uh, three or four tanks going up Dawson Street surrounded by about a hundred North Carolina National Guard troops. And they were running up Dawson Street to go confront the rioters.